As we head into the 2024 season, the categories of hypercar and GTP are once again the main focus of the new era of endurance racing. But what exactly are these two categories? Well, in this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about the hypercar class and the GTP class. Whether you're a complete beginner to hypercar and GTP, or have known about these categories since their introduction, this video can be very beneficial information-wise as we head into the 2024 season. The hypercar class and the GTP class are endurance racing categories for specific high-class racing prototype race cars that participate at big events such as the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The category of hypercar is the main prototype class where the fastest prototypes compete within the motorsport known as the World Endurance Championship. And the category of GTP, or Grand Touring Prototype, is the main prototype category in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And for both categories, all the cars racing will be competing for overall victory in both championships. The inaugural season of the hypercar class was in 2021, and this category was the replacement for the old LMP1 class, which lasted in the WEC until the year of 2020, while the GTP class was introduced in IMSA in 2023 as the replacement for the old DPI class, which lasted in IMSA until 2022. Now, if we look to the previous classes of LMP1 and DPI, there were massive differences between the two categories. But what's fascinating about the new categories of hypercar and GTP is that there are minimal differences between the two classes. The main difference between hypercar and GTP is the BOP, balance of performance. Hypercar uses WEC-regulated BOP, while GTP uses IMSA-regulated BOP. One of the main differences between LMP1 and DPI is that they were separate regulations, while Hypercar and GTP don't have that issue, as the same cars race in both categories. Let's now talk about the cars that participate in Hypercar and GTP. There are two kinds of regulations of cars that can participate in both categories. One of them is called LMH, which is the abbreviated form of Le Mans Hypercar. The other form of regulation is called LMDH, which is short for Le Mans Daytona H. And to be clear, H was never officially identified as being either hypercar or hybrid. So it's just referred to as Le Mans Daytona H, more commonly as LMDH. The LMH regulations were created by the ACO and FIA to be the full replacement for the previous regs of LMP1. Manufacturers building LMH cars have less restrictions compared to the LMDH builders. For example, LMH manufacturers can provide their own chassis supplier, engine design, bodywork, and the list goes on from there. Also, when it comes to the hybrid assist, LMH cars can have a hybrid or not which is different from LMDH. If the manufacturer chooses to have hybrid assist, it can go at the front of the car while the internal combustion engine can be at the back, which is different from LMDH cars where the hybrid system and internal combustion engine is at the back of the car. Another interesting fact about LMH cars is that they can be derived from road-going hypercars, which is different from the LMDH regulations. An example of this is Aston Martin's Valkyrie LMH, which is derived from the road version of the Valkyrie. Moving on to LMDH, which have more restrictions than LMH, but are for sure a viable option for a prototype campaign from manufacturers. When manufacturers build an LMDH race car, they are supplied with a hybrid system and gearbox. And as for the chassis, LMDH manufacturers have to pick from one of the following four chassis suppliers. These companies include Multimatic, Oreca, Ligier, and Dallara. Something else I wanted to mention is that LMDH can be less expensive compared to the Le Mans hypercar regulations. To be clear, LMH and LMDH prototypes can race in both hypercar and GTP simultaneously. However, some cars can't race in IMSA's GTP class, and I think this is where this fact kind of gets confusing to some. 
So let me go into detail about what I mean by that. Some have claimed that the LMH cars can't race in IMSA, which is incorrect. LMH cars are allowed to race in the GTP class. So it's not about the hypercars, it's actually about the manufacturers because IMSA has a very strict rule. If manufacturers wish to enter GTP, they must produce at least 2,500 road cars per year, meaning that some of the brands that competed in hypercar cannot race in GTP because they don't sell enough road cars. And these brands include Glickenhaus, Van Wall, and Isotta Fraschini. So I just wanted to clear up any misinformation because this stuff can kind of get confusing. LMH cars can race in IMSA. Proof of this is that Aston Martin are joining in 2025 with the Valkyrie, which is a Le Mans hypercar. So basically, it's about the manufacturer joining, not the hypercar. The hypercar class and the GTP class are bringing in a brand new golden age to the pinnacle of prototype endurance racing. And that's mainly because of the manufacturers that are joining these categories. And I'll talk about the brands joining in just a moment. But first, I want to mention that this is not the first time we've had a golden era in prototype endurance racing. Back in the 1980s and 90s, there was the regulation of Group C, which was regarded as the best prototype racing regulation in the history of this type of racing. These regulations attracted manufacturers from across the world to compete in the pinnacle of prototype endurance racing. At the event of the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1989, there was even over nine manufacturers battling for overall victories. These regulations also produced some of the best race cars ever in the history of endurance racing, such as the Porsche 956 and 962, the Mazda 787B, the Sauber Mercedes C9, the Peugeot 905 Evo 1B, the Jaguar XJR9 and XJR12, and the list goes on from there. In fact, IMSA's category for the Group C regulations was called GTP. This original GTP class was a huge success for IMSA, and it lasted from 1981 till 1993. And because of how successful it was, IMSA actually revived the GTP name to fit these new regulations from 2023 onward. So technically, the GTP class that's existing now in IMSA is GTP 2.0, as the original GTP class existed in the 80s and early 90s during the phenomenal era of Group C. But the fact is, Group C brought in a golden age to prototype endurance racing, and at times, it could even rival the likes of Formula One. And now, Hypercar and GTP are bringing in a new golden age to prototype endurance racing, the likes we haven't seen since Group C or maybe the glory days of LMP1. And while these regulations may never surpass the legendary Group C regulations or rival the likes of F1, I still think that Hypercar and GTP is something truly incredible. Now, let's talk about the manufacturers that will be or have been participating in the hypercar class or GTP class. So let's first take a look at the manufacturers entered into IMSA's reborn GTP class. There's Porsche with the 963, Acura with the ARX 06, Cadillac with the V Series R, BMW with the M Hybrid V8, and Lamborghini with the SC63. All five of those manufacturers are running LMDH cars, and in 2025, Aston Martin will join with the Valkyrie. That is an LMH car. Moving on to the competitors in hypercar, first up we got Toyota with the GR010, Ferrari with the 499P, Porsche with the 963, Peugeot with the 9x8 hypercar, Cadillac with the V Series R, BMW with the M Hybrid V8, Alpine with the A424, Lamborghini with the SC63, Isotta Fraschini with the Tipo 6 LMH Competizione, and in 2025, Aston Martin will join with the Valkyrie. There has also been two manufacturers that have raced in the past, such as Glickenhaus with the SCG007 and Van Wall with the Vanderveld 680. Glickenhaus ended their hypercar program after the 2023 season, and Van Wall may return to the WEC in the future, although that is unconfirmed at this time. 
So that was my breakdown on the WEC Hypercar class and the IMSA GTP class. What are your thoughts on these categories of prototype endurance racing? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, I highly suggest you do so, considering I make endurance racing content mainly on WEC and IMSA every single week. And if you want to watch another video, check out these options to the right of your screen. So for now, that's it from me. I'll see you all in the next video.